Welcome or welcome back at I need help at C square. In this example, we will find the zeros, the x intercepts, the y intercept of a polynomial function. The polynomial function given down here, f of x equals 2x squared plus mm, 2x cubed, my fault, uh, plus 3x squared minus 10x minus 15. And I'm going to start with this zero because I have this down here. Okay, and I said the zero of a function represents the x value for which the function is equals to zero. In other words, make it the function equals to zero, and we get this polynomial equation, how we call it, zero equals 2x cubed plus 3x squared minus 10x minus 15. So the question is now, how do I solve this one? Uh, whenever we have something like this, my first thing will be to use factoring by grouping. I'm going to group these two guys first, and I notice an x square is the GCF, the greatest common factor of these two terms. And then we have what? 2x here, because it's x squared times 2x is 2x cubed. And what else here? Plus 3. Okay, so we finish with the first group. Let's move to the second one. And usually, if I'm sure about the first part, which I am, I will just copy the uh, binomial, in this case, 2x plus 3. And now the question is, what should I multiply this 2x to get a negative 10x? And that will be negative 5. Double check. Double check, use FOIL, distributive property, and see if you get your original. We do. And now what do you notice? We notice we have a common factor here, a common factor, 2x plus 3, right? So that will be my first guy, 2x plus 3, and then x squared minus 5. And now if we have this factor form equals to 0, we can set up each factor to 0, 2x plus 3 equals 0. So we have here 2x equals negative 3, if we subtract 3 on both sides, and if we divide by 2, we get x equals negative 3 halves. So 1, 0 is negative 3 halves. Do we have more zeros? Yes, because we have the second factor. We have this x squared minus 5. We're going to make that equals to 0. And I will add 5 on both sides. So I get x squared equals 5. And then take the square root. Don't forget to put a plus and minus. And then we have the other two zeros. x equals square root of 5. x equals negative square root of 5. These are the zeros. But what about the x-intercept? The x-intercepts are kind of the same thing with the zeros. What do I mean by that? The x-intercept are negative 3 halves and 0, right, is an order pair. So the next one will be square root of 5 and 0. And the last one will be negative square root of 5 and 0. These are the x-intercept. And you notice whenever you find the zeros, you have the x-intercept also. What about the y-intercept? Y-intercepts are the points, is the point, in fact, because it's only one, for which x equals 0. So we're going to make x equal 0, and we're going to evaluate the function at 0. And what do we get if we evaluate the function at 0? We have 2 times 0 cubed plus 3 times 0 squared minus 10 times 0, minus 15. It takes more time than evaluate, right? Because that will be nothing else than negative 15. This is the value of the function at 0. This is the y-intercept, how we call it, 0 and negative 15. We have everything now in this problem. One more thing on, on this example, I will show you the graph. If you have a computer that can graph for you, if you have a graphing calculator, there you go. Look at here. Uh, this is, these are the zeros or the intercepts. And 
the first one and the last one, I think, that are squ uh, negative square root of 5 and positive square root of 5. And this one is negative 3 halves. Uh, and this is the y-intercept, which we found out. Uh, and that's it. Uh, the only problem, if you use this graphical approach, you may have a hard time to see the exact value of these zeros or x-intercept and the y-intercept. If you enjoy this example, don't forget to click the like button and come back at C-square for more help. Thank you.